Hi, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. This will be a little all over the place because I will be doing a vlog style video instead of my usual for old school April because I thought that would be a little bit more fun. You can see what I'm doing along the way instead of just, you know, list style. First of all, I got a bag of snacks. This isn't all the snacks I'll be having <laughs> over the next month, but this is just a few things that I got from like a specialty store. Uh, first off, Dunkaroos. I like the chocolate ones. They had vanilla too, but this is the chocolate. Got a couple of boxes of those. Uh, strawberry sour punch straws. A chocolate moon pie. Cherry Laffy Taffy. I don't think they make the cherry confetti one anymore, but um, because cherry confetti was my favorite, but uh, just got the regular cherry. Chico stick. They had sugar babies, but they were all melted. So I got the sugar daddy suckers. <laughs> Hilarious. A Neapolitan coconut bar. And this was my very favorite snack or my very favorite candy is the cherry mash. I would get this and a glass bottle of Coke. That was my favorite. I uh, can't drink soda anymore, but I did get the cherry mash. Those were all the snacks I'll be having over the next month. Obviously, I'm not going to eat them in the first week. That's insane. Uh, <laughs> this first day, we'll be taking a mini road trip to get breakfast, which I'll show you guys when we get there what it is. It's another of my favorite nostalgic snacks. We'll be coming back and doing a diamond painting, watching a few episodes of a show. And then we have reading sprints later today, which is really exciting. My first old school April reading sprints. The book I'm reading today is How to Build a Girl by Caitlin Moran. So I'll update you guys along the way how I'm liking this one. But yeah. Day one of Old School April, here we go. Probably wonder why we're in the car. I was thinking of all the things that I find nostalgic and there is one snack that I always loved getting when I was a kid. My friends and I would all get all of our change together, walk to the gas station just to get this one snack. So I can't get it where I live now. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a road trip, not too far. Um, I'm not getting all crazy or anything, but <laughs> I'm gonna take a little road trip. I'll show you guys when I get there what it is. And it might not even be a thing where you are, I have no idea. Um, I never heard anybody talk about it. But for me, it's nostalgic because I haven't had it in a long time. Yeah, I have my old school April playlist on my car radio. I can't let you listen to it obviously because copyright, <laughs> but I have some good stuff on there. Um, I have everything from Backstreet Boys to Blink-182. It is all over the place. You know, there's some Nirvana. There's freaking Spice Girls. <laughs> there's everything. Something for every mood. Here we go. I made it. And I got my snack. These guys. Have you guys ever had these? Pizza Pockets? And they're just so simple, but they are delicious. I don't know if you can see this, but this is what the inside looks like. So it's cheese and pizza sauce and like sausage. It still tastes like it did when I was 12. So <laughs> I'm going to be eating like a 12 year old for the next month, which is what everybody else is probably doing. <laughs> and I also got for my drink, which this isn't really nostalgic. This is if I was you know 12 I would be drinking probably a big red or something but I'm I can't drink soda so I'm drinking a pink lemonade today I'll be driving home or maybe to the park I haven't decided yet yeah see you in a little bit I'm back we are gonna watch are you afraid of the dark I'm gonna watch a few episodes of that before we start reading sprints later today I was looking for the perfect nostalgic craft and I couldn't find the perfect thing. Went into a thrift store with my kids a couple weeks ago. And I found this diamond painting. Huh. Killer clowns from outer space diamond painting. 
It still has a plastic on it, so you might not be able to see it very good. But I'll show you guys when I take the plastic off. What are the freaking chances? I found it for $5 at a thrift store of all places. <laughs> and it has all the, the diamonds with it and all that. So that's the diamond painting I'll be working on today. And while I'm watching Are You Afraid of the Dark? Because I'm not one of those people that could do, I've mentioned before, I can't listen to audiobooks. So I can't diamond paint an audiobook at the same time because I can't, my little brain can't grasp audiobooks. So I'll be watching Are You Afraid of the Dark and diamond painting. That way I'm doing two things at once. And then later I'll be actually physically reading that book while I'm doing reading sprints with everybody. So that'll be fun. But for now, and if you hear any ruckus, um, in here while I'm videoing, I'm going to show you the culprit. They're asleep right now, but I'm going to show you who's making all that ruckus. And I apologize for my messy bed, but I haven't made it because they're sleeping in it. Let me show you. But I'm babysitting my mom's dogs. This is why my bed isn't made. There's one culprit of the noise, Pixie. And there's the other one. She's asleep. Ladybug. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> this is why my bed's a disaster. No reason to make it because they will just wrestle all day. Also, I have an articulating bed. That's why it looks weird because right now I have the, the head of the the bed is up so I can sit up and read. So yeah, if you hear any noise, these two, <laughs> look at them, they know I'm talking about them. These two are the reason for the noise. Also, she has to have an emotional support baby uh, squeaky toy everywhere she goes. If you hear any movement or growling or anything weird, it's them. Because they're back here. I have them back here because that way they're not barking. Because otherwise, if they were in the living room, they would just be barking. This way I can watch them because I'm babysitting and I can keep them kind of under control and they could just be back here hanging out with me. So anyways, yeah, let's do some diamond painting and watch Are You Afraid of the Dark? Okay, super weird angle, but I'm in my comfy spot. We are about to get on reading sprints. I'm still babysitting my mom's dog. I don't know if you can see, I've got one here and one there. Thought I would snuggle with them over here while I'm reading. Which is why I'm over here instead of in my chair. <laughs> which is why I have this weird angle. This is not normally where I talk to you guys. Anyways, just explaining to you why you're getting this sort of weirdness right now. Oh, I'm going to show you where I am with the diamond painting. Jeez. So, the bottom part, so I got that much done. Not too bad. I watched, I think, five episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Getting ready for reading sprints. I'm going to keep you updated on my book as I read it. I'll update you guys here in a little bit. I am not too far into How to Build a Girl. I'm only three ch um. I'm two chapters in, so I'm just now in chapter three. Yeah. Um, 40 pages in. Johanna is a really fun character. She's 14. And she reads a lot. So she's very well read. And you could tell she's very intelligent. But she's also a little unhinged. She's kind of out there with her ideas. She's snarky. And she's very quick-witted. It's almost kind of rambly in style like the writing style is a little rambly because it imagine like having a conversation with a very quick-witted 14 year old girl so the pace is very quick it's that that's what i that's what the um writing style is like a very quick conversation with a 14 year old girl it it doesn't bounce around um it's not like that but it's very quick i'm enjoying the writing style a lot and I'm enjoying Johanna a lot and learning about her and getting to know her as a character because she's a lot of fun and just her snarky attitude. I would call her like hypersexual. She's still a virgin, but <laughs> like she doesn't want to be a virgin at all. Like she's very, um, she's in a, she's in a rush to grow up. Her parents are sort of, you know, they, they definitely kind of have like a hands-off approach to parenting. She 
takes care of her siblings a lot. Her dad is a drunk and he's he never has any pants on. Like, you know, he'll just have his junk hanging out and the kids are all just there and that's sort of gross and cringy and nobody thinks anything of it. And he's not inappropriate with the kids or anything. It's not like that, but it's just oh, that's gross. But anyways, he's a drunk and both of her parents are just like very hands off with their parenting and her mom is going through postpartum depression because she recently had twins that were unexpected and she's going through postpartum depression. But anyways, Johanna helps with her siblings a lot and I'm really looking forward to getting to know her more. So I've made it a little bit farther and you know, for all the ways that Johanna is unique and you know, I've told you that she's very snarky and quirky and you know intelligent but she's also every 14 year old girl she just has this vulnerable and secure side to herself and just her own worst enemy just like all of us at 14 she's just trying to figure herself out trying to figure out who she is trying to navigate this super awkward phase <laughs> that we all go through at 14 where we have those moments I mean I still have those moments as an adult but just where we get hung up on what to say that awkward teen phase of just not freaking knowing who we are and having those super awkward teen moments and that is Johanna she is very cool I mean to me I wish I was that cool at 14 I mean minus the unhinged wildness but yeah this is just her She's just freaking awkward and she's just going through normal teen things too. Which is what her, her embarrassing moment boils down to. And I won't tell you what happened or, you know, what was said, but just to me, it boils down to a normal teen <laughs> embarrassing, like awkward moment that is just blown out of proportion and that she blows out of proportion in her teen dramatic teen mind it's tuesday haven't been up too long pretty much just woke up and immediately started reading <laughs> because i have an appointment today and i wanted to get some reading in before i have to go i did do reading sprints uh yesterday for a while like a few hours still reading how to build a girl about halfway through well, a little less than halfway through johanna has worked on reinventing herself. She's 16 now, so she took a couple of years to reinvent herself. You know, she had her embarrassing TV moment, which I don't feel was that bad. I don't feel like it was as traumatic as Johanna made it out to be. <laughs> but, you know, we've all been there at 14 where you know, we've had those hugely embarrassing moments and then look back on it and they're like, you know, it wasn't that bad. We survived it. We got past it. And, you know, years later, it's like, why did I make such a big deal about it? And maybe that's the lesson here. I don't know. We'll see. But she has taken a couple years to completely reinvent herself. And at her age, I'm really impressed with the amount of energy and effort she took to do that. She has gotten into writing about music so she's working on getting a job as a music journalist that's what she wants to do and going into it she really didn't know a lot about all the different kinds of music she knew just a little bit and she found that out but she spent so much time pouring over all these different albums she would go to the library and borrow albums borrow records she studied music and she took it upon herself to do that. And at 14, that is just, to me, so impressive that she put so much energy and effort into that. She just figured out what she wanted to do and just ran with it. She's 16 now. And it's not a spoiler because you know in the back that that's what she's going to be doing. That she's going to be getting a job as a music journalist. And to know that she put so much effort into this reinvention of changing her name and completely just doing this complete overhaul. And like I said, it took her a couple years to do that. Maybe not quite two years, but because she was already, she'd already turned 14 when she started this process. But the fact that she took so much energy and effort to do that and 
to become a music journalist at 16 is pretty impressive if you think about it. Aside from the wildness, she gets pretty wild in this, um, <laughs> with the, the sex, drugs, alcohol, all that, but otherwise she's a typical 14 year old girl. I think part of the issue too is her parents are very casual. Her parents are very, I don't say hands off, but they are kind of hands off with their parenting. They're kind of like just letting her figure it out. There isn't a lot of advice happening with her parents. There isn't a lot of sitting her down where it would be, I feel like in today's society, um, like if my child was going through this, I think I would be sitting them down and saying, hey, let's, let's figure this out together. Let's talk about this. There wasn't a lot of that. They're just kind of letting her figure things out. You know, she went through this big embarrassing thing and, you know, I don't, a lot of the things that she's doing and going through, I feel like she really needed a parent's advice and a parent's help. And, and that's probably just the time. And, you know, it was early nineties when all this took place and maybe that's just the time, <laughs> but they're just very casual parents. They're just very hands off. And while she's doing all these things, they're just like, yeah, just letting her. But all these crazy things she's going through and all these struggles that she's going through, I really feel like she needed a parent to help her out and to at least offer some comfort. And I don't feel like she got that. But anyways, I feel like she's tough and she's resilient and she's scrappy. And I can't wait to see how this goes. Definitely more, this is a character driven, obviously, because this is all about Johanna and her finding herself and her finding her way as a 14, well now 16, 14 to 16 year old girl. So I, I really love Johanna. I've, I've grown to love her even more as she's figuring it out. And I'm really excited to see where it goes. It's Wednesday. Yesterday got away from me, so I didn't update you guys on how to build a girl. I did finish it. And I loved it. I really enjoyed it. Gave it probably four stars. Ended up with 16 points from this one. I love Johanna. <laughs> I don't think she's unhinged, though. Uh, she's just your typical teenage girl. This whole book is her figuring out who she is in the world. Her figuring out her identity who she wants to be. And it's kind of a beautiful thing. It's raw and it's honest and it's vulnerable. I just love how, how honest it is and how, um, <laughs> Johanna is just so snarky and so just real. Um, that's the best way to describe it. it it's so real and somewhat relatable too. And her parents, while, yes, they're sort of hands off of their parenting and they kind of just let her go about finding herself. But at the end of the day, they are very loving parents and they do care about her and they, they understand her. Definitely 90s vibes are there and Johanna is a very lovable character. She has this fire. It's like, no, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. And she is just so upfront about it. She's not afraid to put herself out there and she's not afraid to, you know, show the world this new person that she's created. And there's just something so beautiful about that. So really loved it. Uh, 16 points for my team. Since I don't have a lot of time today with appointments and all those things, I'm trying to get some points in because I feel like I'm already behind. <laughs> I'll be reading a Goosebumps book, which is a shocker on Shock Street. I don't have a lot of Goosebumps. I mentioned that before. So this is what I'll be reading. You know what else I don't have? I have no Christopher Pike books at all. How is that even possible? I don't know. But anyways, a shocker on Shock Street. So I'll keep you guys updated. It's still Wednesday. It's been a long day because I've had appointments and all the things been really busy i did finish a shocker on shock street i hadn't read a goosebumps book in years not since i was a kid it's really fun uh very nostalgic <laughs> which is the whole point i had a really good time reading it i 
forgot about all like the fake outs and um the whole I love the you know like every chapter ending on a like a cliffhanger so you you know as a kid wanting to keep reading I miss that I remember that and I also remember the <laughs> it has the ad for the the Goosebumps fan pack with the watch and all that in the back. Oh, I love that. Takes me back. It's been a long time. But yeah, I enjoyed reading it. Had a good time with it. Love the fake outs. Love that. Um, the kids in this, Aaron and Marty, I loved their their relationship and their snark back and forth. And, you know, their whole dynamic was really fun. Just really good time. Four stars. Also, I got 10 points from this. I probably won't read any more tonight because it's after 10. And like I said, it's been a long day. I'm tired. But tomorrow I'm going to start reading Jurassic Park. Everybody has been telling me to read this forever. Also, I'm not going to get into what these books are about. I went into it in my April uh, TBR. You didn't watch that I'll link it down below if you're curious what any of these are about or you could just look on Goodreads but <laughs> I'm not gonna get into what these are about I'm just gonna get into my thoughts on them as I go along at this point for tonight it is kind of late but I'm gonna have some Dunkaroos I don't eat a lot I don't eat a lot for like dinner and stuff I just eat junk all the friggin time I gotta stop doing that but I'm gonna have Dunkaroos and I'm gonna watch a movie and just freaking relax because it's been a busy day and my kids wore me out. I'll update you guys tomorrow as I read Jurassic Park. So, see you tomorrow. I'm sorry for the weird angle. I'm in my mom's living room. It's Thursday. We're doing reading sprints right now, but I thought I'd update you guys. I'm about 100 pages into Jurassic Park and I'm really enjoying it. I definitely like it more than the movie. It's more detailed and it's already darker than the movie. That's where we are. This is why I'm stuck on my mom's couch. The other one is under all these blankets. She's a monster, so I'm not going to disturb her. Once she wakes up, it's over because she's a baby. She's under a year old and we don't bother her. Oh, she's going to go back to sleep. Hi! It's Friday. I didn't get as much reading done yesterday as I wanted because I had to edit my video for this week. So, you know how that is. It takes a little time. <laughs> I'm about 150 pages into Jurassic Park. I do really like it. I like that it goes a little bit more in depth on the science aspect, which is really interesting. I really don't know how realistic it is because I don't know a lot about that stuff, but it is really interesting. However, I'm ready to get into the dinosaurs now. <laughs> I'm really ready to get into the more action-packed scenes. I'm ready to get into the scary stuff. Uh, I'm, at this point, I'm just, let's get into it. Yes, I've enjoyed getting the backstory. I've enjoyed getting to know more of the science and more of the science backstory and how they figured everything out and how they figured out um, you know, how to reproduce the dinosaurs and how they cloned the dinosaurs and all those things. And all that stuff is super fascinating, but we're 150 pages in and I'm really ready to see some dinosaurs and some scary stuff at this point. But maybe we're getting closer because we're at the point now where they're in the land cruisers on the tracks. And I know in the movie, you know, that's where things finally start to get a little bit more interesting so maybe we're getting closer I hope so I do really like it though I, or I still like it more than the movie and I'm really into it so I'll keep you guys updated I finished Jurassic Park and I loved it it's definitely better than the movie it's more suspenseful than the movie I love that you're getting people's thoughts you're getting their feelings Whenever the dinosaurs attack and stuff, you get um, what they're feeling and all that. The, the pain and the, the suffering 
And I know that sounds really morbid, but you're getting all that. And you don't get that in the movie. I mean, yeah, you see it and you get the suspense and everything. But you don't get the thoughts and the feelings. And it's even more suspenseful than the movie. Yeah, it's really, really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Also, I learned a lesson here. If I'm ever being stalked by a predator, I really hope kids aren't involved. Not just because I don't want to be responsible for... Um, you know, keeping them safe, but also because I don't want them to get us all killed. Because, <laughs> oh my god, the kids in this, uh, I mean, you've seen the movie, I'm sure, but I mean, the kids, it's like, so hard, and that's how it is in real life with kids, too. Like, they talk at the worst times, and they have to, you know, they're hungry at the most inopportune times, and they cough at the worst times and sneeze at the worst times or whatever you know just everything at the most awkward times and when there's like dinosaurs chasing you and dinosaurs stalking you and all of that it's even worse yeah like definitely if I'm ever in a life or death situation like that I really hope kids aren't there <laughs> um it just made it that much worse anyways really good really enjoyed it um Really, I mean, I should have read it a long time ago. Tomorrow, I don't think I'm going to read. I read, like, almost a thousand pages this week. And, um, yeah. Racked up a lot of points doing that, though. I'll tally up my points tomorrow. I'll tell you guys what I did for the week. But tomorrow, I think I'm going to just enjoy watching movies. And maybe some shows with the kids. Some kid-appropriate spooky movies and spooky shows, and I'll tell you guys what we're doing tomorrow, but we're just going to enjoy, and um, I'm just going to chill, and have some snacks, and watch some movies, so I'll keep you guys updated. Sunday, last day of week one of old school April, yeah, um, today kind of got away from me, <laughs> and I'll explain why. It is Sunday, which is the last day of week one of old school April, it's going by really fast. It's wild. Um, <laughs> yeah, so can't believe this is the last day of week one. My goal was to wake up this morning and immediately just start watching all the movies and all the shows and relax and not leave my house. That did not happen. <laughs> yeah, woke up this morning. My husband just had this wild idea. He wanted, He had a specific restaurant that he wanted to try and was like, dead set on that so and it, it sounded good to me too and everybody in the whole family so we loaded up in the car drove 45 minutes to this restaurant and then we were going to go straight home but he said hey don't you need new books we should get you some new books um and I told him hey that's pretty dangerous are you sure you want to go book shopping because that's a really terrible idea um, he said, yeah, you deserve it. We should get some new books. Went to Half Price Books. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how many are in here. A lot, I can tell you right now. And I'm not going to get into everything I got. That will be a later video. Just be prepared for that in May because it's not an old school April thing. Everything in here is vintage and everything in here is like Christopher Pike, um, Fear Street, all that good stuff so I guess it would fit into old school April but I'm gonna wait and make it probably a May video you might see a couple of them in posts um, on Instagram because I didn't have any Christopher Pike books so those will be in a Christopher Pike post otherwise you won't see them until probably May anyways that's why I got distracted today <laughs> blame my husband so now that it's four o'clock in the afternoon and I've spent all day eating and book shopping <laughs> yeah uh in an hour and a half of driving i'm home and we're gonna be watching you know some movies i'm gonna be watching kid-friendly movies until they go to bed i'm gonna introduce them to don't look under your bed on disney i freaking loved that movie when it came out uh and i watched it over and over when it would play on disney loved that movie it was so wild and my daughter is demanding to watch casper and it has one of my childhood crushes in it so definitely we'll be watching casper as well 
I don't, I don't know what time it'll be when those two are over. It may be about their bedtime. And after that, we'll see what's on. My husband goes to work at like 3 a.m. tomorrow. So I may be on my own tonight watching movies and shows. So we'll see what I get up to. But yeah, for sure Casper and don't look under the bed. And my snack for the evening is Bugles Original Flavor. I really wanted ranch, but I couldn't find them. Maybe I'll share with the kids. <laughs> Just kidding, I'll share. Later in the evening, I'll tell you all the points that I got this week. That's what we're doing. See you in a little bit. It is end of the day, Sunday. So we are at the end of week one. I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I think my favorite part are reading sprints. I have the best time on reading sprints. I haven't got to do a lot of watch parties because I'm either, I'm, I'm always a little bit late to it or whatever. I just haven't gotten to do any of those, but I plan on doing some of them. This is where I am on the diamond painting. I'm done with all the black and the blue. I'm starting to work on the clowns now. So that's fun. I'll be done with that soon. I'm not counting that on my points this week because it's not done. Tonight, we watched one episode of Ren and Stimpy and we watched Don't Look Under the Bed. Didn't get any more. We were going to watch Casper, but we ran out of time because that's just how things go between dinner and all the things. And, you know, when you're trying to corral kids and get them together it's just that's just the way things go <laughs> it's 8 30 I don't know if I probably I probably won't watch another movie so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it all up I may start another book but even still I'll just start that on you know it, I won't finish a book today so I'll just go ahead and tell you guys where I am um so week one wrap up I participated in six set of April all seven days I, as far as all the things that I watched, I watched one episode of Scooby-Doo. I watched five episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? I watched one episode of Ren and Stimpy. And then I watched Don't Look Under the Bed. I listened to 12 nostalgic songs. That was one point. I watched 12 nostalgic music videos. That was one point. I had, I had three nostalgic snacks, which was the Hot Pocket I showed you guys earlier in the week. Dunkaroos and Bugles. I participated in three reading sprints and as, and on reading. The reason I didn't get a lot of movies done is because I read a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, I read almost a thousand pages this week. How to Build a Girl got me 16 points. It was over 300 pages. Goosebumps, A Shocker on Shock Street got me 10 points. And Jurassic Park got me 16 points. That was also over 300 pages. What I'm doing is I'm not putting in points until the end of every week. So today I'll put in all those points and that's how I'm keeping up with it. I'm not doing daily because I would forget what I was doing. I'd forget what I put in and what I didn't. And I'm keeping my own little tally because that way I don't um, put anything in twice or anything like that. So every Sunday I put in everything for the whole week. For this week, that gives me a total of 65 points for the week. So, not too bad. That's it for week one. Look forward to next week will be week two of Old School April. It'll be a lot more books. Um, I'm hoping to get to... I can already tell you that the next one I'm reading is Nelfs. So, Nelfs will be on next week's. And I'll finish up the diamond painting. We'll have more movies. We'll have more shows. And just see where we, where our mood takes us. <laughs> but yeah, look forward to week two next week. Hope you're having a good April. If you're participating in Old School April, hope you're having a good time with that. And I'll see you next Friday. Bye for now.